I'm Helen and that means grade sevens. This is your natural sciences lesson. What is the focus of our lesson today? We are going to be learning about something called insulation. And we are specifically referring to thermal insulation. In other words, it has to do with heat energy. Let's find out. What is insulation? Well, let me give you the definition or part of the definition. Insulation slows the process of transferring heat energy from a warm object to a cold object. Remember, that was our definition of what a heat energy transfer is. We've got a hot object or a hot substance. We've got a cooler object and energy in the form of heat is transferred across from the warmer substance or object to the cooler substance. And you learned previously that there are three different ways our energy in the form of heat can be transferred. You learned about radiation, which is the example here is the flames of heat from this gas burner. We've learned about the handle of a pot, for example, getting warm by conduction. And that is when the heat energy is transferred from particle to particle as they gain kinetic energy and collide with each other and so the heat is passed up the handle of the metal object. And you learned that there are currents within a liquid or within a gas that convey heat energy or transfer heat energy as well and this is the process known as convection. So as our snowman asks us what then is insulation. We certainly by this time understand the concept of heat energy transfers. Insulation is going to block or slow that process of transferring heat energy. So blocking off our gas fire or putting a lid on might prevent waves of energy being lost, waves of heat being lost from our pot. Doing something to the handle, maybe building it out of a substance that doesn't conduct energy as well. This is the process of insulation. So we can look at two opposite processes here. We've got the process of heat energy transfer. And when we want to block that heat energy transfer, we call it insulation, right? Pretty simple. Let's have a look at a little bit more about insulation. Why are pot handles and the lids and the handles of kettles, for example, often covered with plastic? And why is it a good idea to use oven gloves or oven mitts when you are handling pots that are hot and dishes that are coming out of an oven? Well, of course, the plastic and the fabric that makes up the oven gloves are materials that do not transfer heat energy efficiently. Some insulators won't transfer heat energy at all, but generally an insulator is not efficient or is not very good at transferring our heat energy. We could say that heat insulators or insulators against heat transfer block it. So we could say they block the transfer of heat energy. Another word is they retard it or slow it down. But all in all, we come to this word 
They are inefficient at heat transfer. So we've got metal, for example, the metal of our pot, which is a good conductor of heat energy. And we've got the plastic insulating handle, which is a bad conductor of heat energy. So if heat is the transfer of energy by conduction, convection and radiation, insulation reduces the rate at which the energy is transferred. So we use those words. It blocks the heat transfer. It slows down the heat transfer. It retards the heat transfer. It just simply makes the heat transfer less efficient. Insulation, and here's one of the words used in the sentence, slows the process of heat energy transfer. And so we come to the related word, an insulator. So we know that insulation is a process that is going to slow down heat energy transfer. The insulator is the noun. It is the thing that is going to do the slowing down. It is made out of a particular material that does not transfer energy very well. So when we talk about insulation, we're talking about the process. A thermal insulator is a material that does not allow thermal energy to pass through it easily. We say, therefore, that a thermal insulator has low thermal conductivity. So let's think of our pot again. We've got the metal pot and we've got a plastic handle. We would say that the metal has high thermal conductivity, conductivity, but the plastic has low thermal conductivity. And in fact, the lower the thermal conductivity, the better the material is as an insulator. Also, the thicker the material, the better it will be at reducing heat energy transfers and the more effective will be the insulation. And I'm sure that you know that we're going to experiment with that somewhere down the line. We're going to investigate insulation as a way of blocking heat energy transfer. So I want you to start growing those ideas in your mind. How would you insulate your coffee cup maybe and keep the coffee cup warmer and not conduct the heat energy out to your hands? Start thinking about experiments you could do. Now, if a material changes temperature slowly when it's heated, that is also an indication that it is a thermal insulator. So do you remember we had the situation of the pot? We had a metal spoon and then we had our wooden spoon. Eventually the wooden spoon does get warm, eventually after a long time, but the metal spoon gets hot very, very fast. So we know that wood, for example, changes temperature very slowly. That's why it's a very good fuel for making a fire as well, because it takes a long time to transfer the heat energy. Now, in systems designed to transfer thermal energy, the wasteful dissipation of thermal energy to the surroundings needs to be reduced. So this is done using thermal insulation. So the kettle is designed to transfer thermal energy, but how much of that thermal energy is wasted or dissipated if we made the kettle out of metal, as old-fashioned kettles were? 
Today, we have different kinds of plastics that we can make the kettle out of that are not going to melt at the temperature of boiling water. And therefore, the plastic kettle keeps the water in the kettle hotter for longer after you've boiled it because it's not dissipating or wasting that heat energy through the sides of the kettle. Now, here is a fun question, and it relates to our little theme in our lesson today of the snowmen. But I also want you to think about how it relates to you and how you dress in winter and how you dress in summer. Why are our snowmen wearing hats and scarves and mittens and even nice warm socks? Why, when it is cold, when temperatures are low and it's cold outside, do we wear clothing that, first of all, we wear lots of it, in other words, we have layers of clothing. You might put a shirt on and a jersey and a coat and a scarf around the breast. Why is the clothing made out of substances like wool? And why do we wear shoes when we're walking around on cold surfaces? What is the purpose of our shoes and our clothing, even our mittens? What do those things do for us and what are they doing for the snowmen? Well, of course, our clothing is made out of fabric or textiles such as wool. Some of our clothing is made out of cotton, which is a lot lighter than wool. Our shoes have very dense soles or the bottoms of shoes. That's what the sole of the shoe is. They're very dense material. Very often we'll see the soles are either made out of a kind of plastic or they can be made out of rubber. And we see that our feet are then protected by these soles of the shoes. And in fact, very often you'll see that the top of your foot gets cold, but the bottom of your foot is warmer. So let's get to our question, why? Why do we, like the snowmen, wear these clothes, hats, scarves, mittens, and shoes when it is cold? Well, remember, we need to insulate ourselves against heat loss. In summertime, heat loss is important. So we dress in lightweight materials. We may dress in lighter colors that can reflect the heat energy that is radiated from the sun. We are going to want heat transfer to take place from our bodies to the environment so that we can cool down. But in winter, and like our snowmen, we need to insulate ourselves. We need to use materials like fabric. We need to use materials like plastic and rubber, which are going to, and even leather, which maybe the rest of your shoe is made of, to insulate us from losing, from us being the heat source, and transferring our body heat to the environment, which would, of course, be what we've been referring to as wasted or dissipated heat. It's lost to our body, and therefore it's making us feel colder and colder. So we need to try and block that. And so what we do is we wear layers of clothing, the layers are going to trap air in the clothing. The fabrics are going to help us insulate ourselves against losing heat energy to the environment. So dress up warmly if it's a cold day. Make sure you are blocking heat 
energy transfers with your warm clothes. That's it for today, guys. I will see you next time and we'll carry on learning about insulation. But for today, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.